All right, welcome everybody. So today we're going to do things slightly differently. Um, so before I start, I'd like to ask you to please come up front and try to sit next to at least one other person. Who was able to download Tableau Public? Please raise your hand. Okay, so keep your hands raised because um, anybody who hasn't been able to download it, I have some USB sticks here, or you can team up with a person who has it. So I'd like you guys to work in teams, but everybody needs to come up front into the first 10 rows here, please, because I don't want to run back and forth the whole lecture hall. Try to sit in the center, first 10 rows if you can, and uh, maybe on the sides, but team up with somebody else. Again, if you have Tableau Public, raise your hand. So maybe you guys should work with other people. <laughs> So if you don't have Tableau Public and you like it on your laptop, I have a stick with the data and Windows and Mac versions. You have it? Okay. Here. You have it. Who wants Tableau Public? Okay. You can also download it. Just Google it. You'll find it. Okay. So while you're all getting settled, please sit next to somebody else. You're going to work in pairs. It makes it a lot easier, trust me. So don't be shy. And please come a little more up front, guys. I don't want to run back and forth. It's not good for my, for my fitness condition. I might actually get fit in this class. <laughs> OK, while you're doing that, a um, couple announcements. Of course, you know about the homework due date today. And I want to make sure you understand that the project teams have to be grouped by now. If you didn't find a partner, we're going to randomly group you with other teams or amongst yourselves. So please, if you haven't done that yet, submit your project partners, um, the form that was sent out, as soon as possible. It's due today. And then, as of today, we'll make the project proposals form public. So you're going to have to fill out a project proposal form before next Thursday. And the sooner you do it, the better, because the TFs will start talking to you about your project, and they will tell you very quickly if your project is infeasible or feasible. The longer you wait, and you know, later if you find out that the TF thinks the project is infeasible, that's going to be a real bummer, because there is not a lot of time till the project deadline, which is December 10th. So again, the sooner you fill out the project proposal, the better for you. So please do it as soon as possible. Are there any questions about projects or teams or the process? OK, so today we're going to talk about Tableau Public and interactive visualization. And um, we'll actually do this hands on. That's why I would like you to work in teams uh, of two. And so. Um, before I get started, I just want to put this a little bit in context. Interactive visualization is, in my opinion, extremely important. And unfortunately, in Python, it's very hard. And we looked into several technologies to enable it. And it turns out they're all a little bit clumsy, let's say. And so instead of forcing you to learn yet another Python framework, we decided we'll have you use a professional visualization tool that creates interactive visualizations relatively easily. Now, Tableau has been around for, I'd say, about 10 years or maybe more. It's by now, um, as far as I know, a 2,000 or plus, more, more than that, uh, person company. Um, the tool itself is expensive, so this is not a free tool. However, they have a freely available version, which is called Tableau Public. And the catch with Tableau Public is that you can't actually save what you've done except on their web server in which case it is public, hence the name. So you can't actually put in any private data. Any data that you use will be public on their web server. Now, I think that's perfectly legit legitimate for your final projects, because most of you, I think, I hope all of you, will have public data for your final projects. So we encourage you to think about using Tableau Public um, for your final projects to do some interactive visualizations and dashboards that you can then link to from your project website. And I think that'd be very cool. So that's the goal of today, is to introduce you to Tableau, to show you what it can do, and to have you actually do some of those things. 
and then hopefully to get you excited enough that you're going to use it for the final project. All right, so um, by now, who has Tableau Public either on their laptop or is, does anybody not have it that is not sitting next to somebody who does? I think you guys. You need to team up with somebody who has it so you can work with them. Please do that. Who doesn't have it? Nobody. <laughs> For those of you at home, uh, please download it. It's easy to find online. You also need the data. Um, again, you can download it. And it, there is a couple memory sticks floating around. Where are the memory sticks right now? So anybody who wants the data and who doesn't have it yet, please get the memory stick. If not, I guess we're all set. So um, as we're doing this, just for the people at home, please follow along so whenever we do something in class, just try to do the same thing at home. And there is an activity workbook that I'll show shortly that will guide you along. OK, so when you start Tableau, it looks like this. So please, everybody, start it. And then you have a bunch of options to connect to data on the left. Are you able to read any of this text in the back? Can you please give me a thumbs up? Yes? OK. Um, so in this case, we're going to open a text file, which is a CSV file. Text file doesn't mean it has text in it. It just means it's stored as text. And we're going to open seattlebuildingpermits.csv, which is part of this data folder that hopefully you have downloaded. So uh, navigate to this file, seattlebuildingpermits.csv, and open it up. So depending on the speed of your laptop, this may take a couple seconds. But once it's open, you have this view. And what Tableau did is it loaded this data that's just a regular spreadsheet. And it's going to show you what it thinks the data types are in each of the columns of the spreadsheet. So here on the bottom, we have essentially the spreadsheet that we just loaded. And then on top of it, you, for each column header, you see the title of the column as it was stored in the spreadsheet. And you see the data type that Tableau thinks this column has. So this little hash mark here, if you click on it, it thinks the application permit number is a whole number. Uh, this little ABC thing, it thinks that this permit type is a string. And if you go a little bit to the right, so application date, it thinks that this is a date. So it's always a good idea when you load some spreadsheet into Tableau to first check if it got the data types of your columns correct. And by the way, it does recognize geographical location, so it has latitude and longitude in this spreadsheet. And so you can actually check um, you know, the geographic role, and it thinks this is geographic latitude, and that's correct. And you can also tell by this little Earth symbol here. So if the data type uh, wouldn't be correct, um, we can change it. So for example, the application permit number, we don't really care about the number. You know, it's not really something we want to do math with. So we, we might as well declare it a string. So I can just go down here, the little pull down, and I can make it a string. And Tableau will change the data type internally. And I hope you can see this, but it's now a little ABC symbol here. So now it's thinking it's a string. So far, so good. Please interrupt with any questions. Yes? When you say tuple, which one, which column do you mean? Location. Oh, yes. So in this case, it probably, you know, it probably figured out that this is not a number because it's a tuple. So it's storing it as a string. But it did separate it into latitude and longitude into those two columns. And right now, I can't remember if those were already done in Excel or if Tableau itself split the data. Tableau is pretty smart when it loads the data. So even if you give it, for example, locations, it might actually add latitude, longitude for the locations based on its internal um, database. So it's very likely that it looked at this and figured out that's lat long, 
and it made them into two separate columns. Any other questions? Okay, so this is not that the you know that exciting. Oh, by the way, I should mention this view up here. You can actually load multiple data sets at the same time, and you can do a lot of database operations here. So you can do inner joins, outer joins. You can um, you know do some SQL queries on the data, etc. So Tableau is actually quite sophisticated in its connections with data. So if you have data in multiple spreadsheets, there is actually a nice way of combining that data within Tableau without having to do a lot of spreadsheet mumbo jumbo. All right, so let's go to the sheet. Uh, down here on the left, it says, go to worksheet. And it takes a little time. But then once it's ready, it shows you this view. And this is the main view of Tableau. This is the view where you do all of the visualizations. So on the left, you have basically the columns that you just saw of the spreadsheet categorized into dimensions and measures. Dimensions you should think of as categorical types. You know, these are just categories. And measures are numerical types or quantitative measures. So these are numbers. So as you can see, latitude, longitude is a measure. It has the value uh, of the building permit. It has the number of records of building permits, etc. And up here, it has things like application name, application date. Um, here is our application permit number, the one that we converted to a string. It's now a category. And it also puts dates under the dimensions here. Um, I should maybe tell a little bit about this data set. So this data set is about building permits in Seattle over a period of time. I actually forget, but we'll find out um, how, how long. And it basically contains every building permit issued with its location, with its value, and with its building type. So it's a pretty rich, interesting data set that we're going to explore. So the first thing we might wonder about is, you know, how many permits are there total broken down by building type? Okay. Um, So to do this, we're going to find the number of records, which is the number of building permits. And we're looking at it per category. So I'm going to do command click on this one. So I have both of them selected. And then on the very right, there is this handy dandy show me bookshelf. You have to actually click on it if it's not visible. Um, and the show me bookshelf shows you all the visualization types that you can do with those two data types selected. So in this case, what we want to do is just a bar chart. And we'll select the horizontal bars, which is the blue bars here on the left column. Once I do that, I get a bar chart. I can get rid of this now. So I have a bar chart that breaks down the number of permits by category. And to make this a little bit more visible, I can do a couple things. First of all, I can actually, on the very top here, do entire view. So it actually pulls it down to the entire view. And secondly, I might want to sort this by size. So there's a couple sorting options here, one um, descending and one ascending. So let's do it descending. So just clicking on this little button up here will sort them. Now, this is good, but um, you know, it's still a little bit hard to read these labels. So to make this even more obvious, we can actually drag the category also here on the color shelf. So I'm dragging category onto color, and it automatically creates a color map for me and colors each of the bars by category. It also shows me a little handy-dandy category legend over here. Now, this is, of course, redundant with what we have here, but Sometimes redundancy is actually not a bad thing. OK, so now we get a sense that most of these building permits were done for single families and duplexes. There is a fair amount of commercial buildings, multifamily less. There's this funny category null. So why would that be here? Yeah. OK, if it doesn't fit in, and how would Tableau know that? Exactly. That field was empty for those particular buildings. 
And how would that happen? Yeah. Yeah, it might be a permit, permit for something that doesn't really fit those predefined categories, exactly. Um, it could also be a data entry error, right? It could be that somebody mistyped one of the categories or maybe didn't even put it in. So at this point, we probably would want to go back to the spreadsheet and make sure we understand what's going on. But let's not worry about that. What we do instead, we can actually exclude this category. So if I click here on null, um, here on the null uh, label, I have a little exclude button and magically it excludes that category from my view and so I, I don't have to worry about it in this view. So this is our first very simple visualization and we call this bar chart. Um, I just type the name of it down here under the tab um, and that's gonna come in handy later when we do a dashboard. Now, so far, there's really nothing special about this. You could have done this just as easily in Python. Um, maybe with the exception, it does have some nice mouse overs, but otherwise, you know, there's really nothing special. So, so far, so good, I hope. So, um, at this point, I'd like you to start working on this activity spreadsheet, which, by the way, you can find here, bit.ly slash CS109 activity. So if you please go there in your browser. You should find this Google Doc. And what I'd like you to do is open up a new Tableau window. So you can easily do that by doing File, New. It's opening up a completely new window. Now, you might see this view here and you wonder, well, where did my data view go? Click on this little uh, symbol on the upper left and you're back to the original view that we had at the beginning. And then open the data called musicstore.csv. Again, it's a text file, so you have to open this as a text file and open this up. And at this point, I'd like you to start answering the following question. And uh, for now, please just do the first two, okay? So in this spreadsheet, there's a couple, I mean, in this Google Doc, there's a couple questions. The first one is which genre sells the most? And the second one is which artist sells the most? And I'd like you to answer those questions. And I'll give you a clue. The answer is going to be a bar chart. So it should be very similar to what we've just done. But I want you to just play with this and figure it out. And please pay attention to the question. So which genre sells the most in Europe and Asia is the actual question. Okay, so I'd like you to see if, if you can figure that out by just playing with Tableau. By the way, here is the spreadsheet. So this is music store data. It has different artists and it has um, the city where you know, this record would, was sold. Um, it has invoice date, unit price. I'm sorry, the, the first name is actually the, the name of the buyer. Um, there's a bunch of stuff about buyers, but then you see the artist name, ACDC in this case, the album, and then particular track, and so on. And it tells you lots of stuff about, you know, what kind of file it is, what genre it is, and, you know, how many sales were made, or what the sale price was in this particular case. So without further ado, um, just go to the sheet and you see all of this data here on the left and then just start playing with the show me feature to try to answer some of these questions. And please work in pairs and help each other out. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and I'll come by. Okay, so let's do this for five minutes. In five minutes, I hope you have the answer to question number one. Anybody have trouble getting to the worksheet? Yes, it's this URL here, bit.ly slash CS109 activity. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. So for now, just focus on question number one. And at home, please follow along.
of you have gotten to the first step. So um, the question is, which genres sell the most? So clearly we need genre. And the question is, you know, sell the most. Is that sales or is that quantity? Who thinks it's quantity? Who thinks it's sales? Who is right? It depends on what you want to see, right? So I'll, I'll do quantity just to be different. <laughs> and I select those two. I go to the show me. And again, I give you a hint. It's a bar chart. Um, I get my bar chart. I can sort it. So I think so far, so good, right? So I, I saw many of you got this far. Anybody not get this far because of the data issues? Or I'll stop by after, after this. OK, so once you have this, you might want to, again, color this by genre. So we can drag the genre onto the color shelf. And we get a nice color encoding for all the different genres that are in this data set. OK, so um, the next question was, well, how does this break down by region, right? We wanted to look at Europe and Asia. So there's actually a field called region. And we can drag that field into what is known as a filter. OK, so we drag this into a filter, and it will ask me, well, select the things you want to see from the list. So in this case, I want to see Europe and Asia. And I say OK. And it filters the data automatically by Europe and Asia. Now, I may not always want to just see Europe and Asia, so I can click on that tiny, tiny little triangle here next to the region uh, label here. And then it shows me a little menu. And one of them is called Show Quick Filter. So then you can see the region, and I can drag it over here, is a little menu here. And I can actually, if I want, I can click things on and off to see sales in different regions. All right, so please try to get to this point. And if you're done, then please go to the next question. Which artists sell the most? In the meantime, if you have any issues, uh, please raise your hand. Thanks. So um, moving on to the next question, please, uh, whenever you do these visualizations in Tableau, create new worksheets for every single view. You know, Tableau doesn't care. You can have 20 different worksheets open. It doesn't, doesn't matter. So here on the bottom, uh, next to where it says Sheet 1, there's a little button called New Worksheet. So we're going to make a new worksheet, and you get a totally new view. And the question was, which artists sell the most? So we clearly want to have artist. So this time, I'm just going to drag it into the columns. And that shows me all of the artists. And then sells the most. So we get sales, and we drag that into the rows. OK, now, I usually get the columns and the rows mixed up. Um, so we end up with a bar chart that's vertical. But that's not so good, because I can't actually read the labels. So it's fortunately easy to swap. So there's a little swap button here next to the sorting buttons. So I can swap rows and columns. And then I have the artists going down. And again, I see how much they sold. And I can sort this. So we get a sense of you know, what they sold. Now, we might want to get a sense of their genres, right? So it asks, um, in which genre? So we take genre. And we drag that onto color. And I say I want to add all of them. And we get a stacked bar chart. So now we see for each artist how it breaks down into the different genres. Did anybody get this far already? OK, great. Does anybody have trouble? Let me know in the next section. OK, so the next kind of visualization is looking at time. So I'm going to go back now to our Seattle example. And I'm going to show you how to deal with time. So I'm making a new uh, worksheet here. So we're now in the Seattle data set. And what we might want to find out is, how have building permits been issued over time? And fortunately, we have. Uh, an issue date here. 
and if I double click on it, it will actually roll it out into different columns. So I now see that the data goes from 2010 to 2015. And, you know, right now it just gives me the dates. So I need to have actually some measures to look at. And in this case, I just want to look at the number of records, like how many building permits were issued over time. So I drag that into the rows. And I get this graph. Now, one thing that Tableau does automatically, which you may have already noticed, it aggregates the data whenever you drag it from the left into your views. So, for example, if I go back to this here, you see here it actually shows you the sum of the sales, right? It doesn't show you individual sales. It actually aggregates the sales into sums, broken down, in this case, by artist and by genre. And that's kind of a philosophy behind Tableau. It aggregates as much as it can to make sure you're not overwhelmed with too much data in any single view. So in this case, it actually aggregated into the year. So what we're seeing here is the development of house permits for each year, and it shows you the sum for each year. So you kind of get a sense that, you know, there is actually a lot of them that are null. So there is a couple of them that have no year. Again, I can click on here on null and exclude them. But, you know, you get a sense that they basically increase over time. And then for 2015, we didn't have the full data yet. So this is only part of the year. So clearly, the total is less than in the previous year. But the year is kind of a coarse aggregation. So I can click on that triangle here on the right, and I can actually look at the month. Now, this is a little bit disappointing too because it actually literally shows me the sum for each of the months but it doesn't seem to show me all of the months it only shows me one year so what happened well uh, and this is a little bit tricky so don't worry if you don't get it right now um, I'll say it and then maybe I'll say it again later Tableau has two different pill colors these are called pills by the way there is a blue pill and a green pill the blue means it's a discrete data item, and the green means it's a continuous data item. So right now, date or month is actually discrete. What we really want is a continuous month, which we get if we scroll further down, there's another mention of month where it actually says May 2015. And if we do that, we actually get a continuous time variable, and we see all of the data for every day throughout all of the different years, 2010 to 2015. Okay, so that's probably what we want. And now we can look at the data broken down by category. So I can drag category again on color. And now I basically get four line charts that show me for each category how the number of permits has evolved. And uh, it's kind of interesting to look at the patterns here. So clearly in January we have a low, right? So you kind of see the seasonal patterns. In the summer, we have a high. Um, you see that maybe different building permits have different patterns. So this one here on the bottom, which is industrial, has a much flatter sort of seasonal pattern. So maybe industrial buildings don't really follow the regular seasonal pattern. Uh, commercial, on the other hand, does seem to follow some of them more, etc. All right, and now we also see these null data here. And, you know, again, if we want to exclude it, we can click here and we can exclude it. The other thing you can do at this point, um, Tableau automatically picked a line chart for us because it realized this is continuous time data and I have different categories. So a line chart is the appropriate visual encoding. I can change that by clicking here on the marks shelf Instead of automatic, I can, for example, make this an area chart. And now I have a stacked area chart. And usually in these, I want to sort them so that, you know, the areas kind of go from largest to smallest. So I, this one here should actually be further down. So I can drag it here in the category shelf further down. And so now it's at least correctly stacked. And we can talk about the difference between a line chart and an area chart. Um, 
what's the difference in terms of how you read it? And what's the advantage of each? So that's the line chart. That's the stacked area chart. Yeah. Yes. Correct. So this one shows you the total numbers, right? And it also breaks it down into proportions. So it makes it easy to see the proportions of each building type compared to the total. Whereas in the line chart, it's much easier to see the actual numbers for each one of the different categories. Okay, so I think there was a question, if I'm not mistaken. Any questions? No? Okay, so that's how we do line charts in Tableau. And now I'd like you to go back to your music store data and answer the third question. How does the sales trend of rock compare against alternative punk and blues? So it's asking you for trend over time, right? So you have to figure out how do I make a, a, a line chart and um, yeah, so try to do that and try to answer that question on the music sale data. And again, if you have problems, questions, please raise your hand. So um, let me show you how I do this. So the question is, how does the sales trend of rock compare against punk and blues? Um, okay, so we know we have to find a date, right? It's about trends, so you quickly you know, scroll down your dimensions, and there's actually only one date here, which is invoice date, so that gives you a hint. So let's use, double click on this, and you see there is invoice, you know, dates go from 2008 to 2012. And then we need to know, sorry, what was it? The genre, right? So we need to know the trends of the genre. And What are, we, what are we looking at? Oh, sorry, sales trends, right? So um, I don't want to actually do the genre. I want to actually look at sales. So I'm dragging the sales into the rows. And I'm getting this boring chart, which is not very informative because it's aggregated. So I'm going to change my time to a continuous month variable. And now I get the sales total for the data set over time. And now I want to break it down by genre. And it actually figures out there's a lot of genres in here, so it's asking me do I want to add all of them or do I want to filter? And I actually want to filter. So I say filter and then add. And now I can select, what was it, rock, uh, alternative and punk, and blues. And voila. Okay, so I get that chart. And if I wanted to, I could again filter this by region. So if I wanted to, I could actually add region to the filter and just look at Asia and Europe. Just as a, you know, I can do that. And I can show the quick filter. And again, I have basically the different regions here on the right. All right, so far so clear? Okay, so now um, let's do some geographical visualization. I'm going to go back to my Seattle data set, and I'm going to add a new worksheet. We might actually want to know where are these building permits issued. And we know that in this data set we have latitude and longitude. So I can actually select that latitude, latitude and longitude, and I can do a show me. And it gives me basically a map option here. So I'm selecting the map. And now for this to work, you have to be connected to the internet, um, just as a, an FYI. So if you're sitting in your uh, coffee store without internet connection, it's not going to show the actual map. It will still do the visualization, but the map data is pulled down from the internet. And we get probably the world's most boring bubble chart. It has one bubble, right? Uh, really not that exciting. The reason is, again, Tableau aggregates all of the building permits into 
a single variable, which is basically the sum of all building permits, which happens to be just one number. So it plots one dot here. So to break it out, we have to use another dimension to kind of show us all of the data. And the one that you know, we know for sure will be unique across all of these is the application name. Right? The application name is unique for each one of these building permits. So we're going to drag this one onto details. So if you go down here, there's a detail shelf. And when I click here and I add all of the members, it shows me a very crowded chart. And that chart now shows me all of the building permits for Seattle over the whole period of time. So that's not very useful, but at least I see that, you know, do I have any outliers in the data? And, and I might. So I can, for example, uh, zoom in. And there's a couple building permits that happen to be in the water. I don't know with, what's up with that. So maybe some of the geolocation isn't that accurate. OK, so we clearly need to filter this. And again, we can filter this by category. And I put category on color. So now, at least, I get a better sense of the different categories. I'm going to exclude the null category here. And so I can look at here the commercials, here the industrial. So there's definitely fewer industrial ones. Institutional, even fewer. This is multifamily. And this is single family, which was, as we know, the biggest one. Um, and you know, I can also look at what is the value of these different building permits. So there's a, a measure here called value. And if I drag that on the size, it will change the size of the bubble based on the value of the particular building permit or the particular building. So that gives me a much better view. I can at least now distinguish the different buildings. And here's my little value uh, legend, so I can get sort of a sense. Um, again, I can zoom in. And so, for example, it's easy to see that there's a big commercial building here that has a very high value, over 3.7 billion, apparently. So we might want to look into that. There is another one that's very high, and most of them are relatively low, right? And so, like in the 5,000, there is one for 12 million, actually. So this, most of them are relatively low. Um, so, so that allows me to get a, a, a map relatively easily. Now, to make this even more interesting, I can actually um, move the issue date, which was one of our dates here, into the filters. So I can filter by issue date. And I want to filter by a range of dates. And I want to use a slider, as it's shown here. So I say OK. And it's hidden somewhere here behind the show me shelf, I think. No, where is it? I lost my issue date slider. Not sure where the slider went. I have to find it. <laughs> but in tech, technically speaking, I should see a, um, oh, here it is. Show, I have to do show quick filter. It didn't actually show it. So here is my slider. And I can actually change the range of dates. And I can sort of slide the dates, the date range around to see how the different building permits have evolved over time. So this is a first example of the value of interactivity. By being able to filter interactively, I get a much better picture of you know, what the data is actually doing. OK, yeah. Yes, actually. And I believe it's right here. Um, I think it's called. Actually, no, I have to, 
here it's called pages so if I move issue date to pages and then I say show quick filter it should show me here a little button so I want to actually have multiple values um, yeah anyway there's a way to do this with pages and I just have to remind myself how <laughs> so let me play with this and I'll get back to you but anyway there's a way to do it so you can actually play back over a range of time any other questions okay so let's go back to the music data let's go to question number four so do a map right the question is oops uh, what does the geographic distribution of sales look like in Europe all right so you're gonna have to do a map of the sales of the music data and try to make it so that it only shows Europe so you're gonna have to filter the region by Europe all right so while you're doing that I'll try to figure out the play button <laughs> Okay, let's look at the map. So, first of all, we need country, right? Um, if I double click on country, it will actually create a map already. And I need to know, wait, what was it? Sales. So, I need a measure. So, I basically look at sales, and I want to, in this case, I'll just drag it on the size so I get a bubble map. Um, it did say specifically in Europe, so I'm going to put the region into my filters, and I only select Europe. Now, this map is fine, but maybe I don't want to actually use a bubble map, so I'll click on show me. I can never remember how to do an area map, but show me gives me the option, so I'll click on the area map, and that's actually much better. So that's basically it. That's the map. Now, it's not so easy to read because I have to hover over each of these. So I can actually add some labels. So first of all, um, I can put the country on the label. So it now labels my, my countries. And then secondly, I can also put sales on the label. And then it shows me the sales. It's a little bit hard to read. Um, so what I can do is I can click on the label shelf here and it gives me a bunch of options and the first one is the text so if I click on that little ellipse here I can actually see what it displays so I want to make the country bigger let's make that 12 points and then the sum of sales below let's make that 10 points okay and now it's easier to read and because I might be colorblind or you know a friend who's colorblind or you just want to be aware of colorblind people you don't necessarily want to use this green color scale so I can click on that little triangle here next to the sum of sales color scale and I can edit the colors and then the palettes um, Tableau has many many useful palettes so in this case I might want to use a red blue diverging palette which you know is, is more colorblind friendly and also distinguishes between values that are higher and lower uh, in, in a much better way. And that immediately shows me what's going on in this data. Okay, so, all right. Coming back to the Seattle data. Oh, by the way, I found out it, uh, it showed up, but I didn't see it when I, when I was asked before. So coming back to the issue of um, playback, and I think you were asking the question, right, how do we play back data? So it actually is the pages uh, shelf here. So you, I drop issue date on pages. I selected month because I wanted to see it by month. And I select a continuous version of the month, which is, you know, where it says May 2015. And then actually over here I have these playback buttons. So I can basically play it back each month by month over time, which is what's happening now and you know I can play it again 
So anyway, that's how you play back um, data over time. It's the pages shelf. Okay, so let's wrap this up here uh, in the Seattle data. The, the last thing, actually I don't want to do a new shell, I want to do a dashboard. So I have these nice visualizations now and I should give them names. So this one we call very uh, creatively timeline. And then this one here we call very creatively map. Okay, so now instead of a new worksheet, I want to create a new dashboard, which is one button over here on the bottom. A dashboard is, allows me to drag and drop different visualizations into the same view. And I think that's really where the magic happens, and that's where interactivity will be very useful. So first of all, I see my three different visualizations that I created here on the left. It gives me some handy-dandy thumbnails in case I didn't name them, so that comes in handy. And I can drag them over. So I want to have a map. First of all, let me make this bigger. So down here on the left, you can select the size of your view. And I'm going to make it, oops, uh, I'm going to make it automatic. But, you know, you can select different sizes. So that's the map. Uh, the timeline I want to have on the bottom. So when I'm, when I'm dragging it over, you see these gray areas. Right now, this is set to tiled, so it gives me some option where I want to drop it. And I want to drop this on the bottom here. So I'll let go, and it puts it on the bottom. And then I want to drag my bar chart, and this one I want to put on the right somehow, maybe up here. Okay, so now I have my three visualizations in the dashboard. Uh, first of all, I might want to make this one bigger. So there's a little triangle here again, and I can say fit the entire view, so I have it bigger. Uh, at this point, I can also get rid of the titles here, so I'm unselecting title to just get a little more space. Same thing here. Okay. So I have my map, I have my bar chart, um, I have my playback window. I can start dragging these things around. So for example, this legend here, I can make it floating and I can drag it over here so it kind of shows up on top of the map. Same thing with this legend here. I make it floating and I'm going to drag it up here just to get it out of the way. Okay, so that already looks pretty good. Um, I need a title. So here on the left you have a bunch of Things you can drag in an image or even a web page. I'm going to drag in some text, so I want to put the title on the very top. See if I manage so at the very top. And the title is my dashboard. And I'm going to make this bigger. Let's call it 12 points and bold. And of course, it screwed up everything I did, so I have to make this one smaller. All right, so now I have a title on the top. I might want to move this one a little further down. Okay. Well, so far it's not that spectacular because um, I just see the three visualization in one view. The real magic happens if I start using them in a linked way. So to do that, I can click again on that little triangle here, and one of the options is use as a filter. So if I use this as a filter, anything I select here will automatically be selected in the other views. So I automatically filter by the category type, both in the map and in the, uh, in the view here. I don't actually want to have this pages view anymore. It's kind of annoying. So I'm going to change that here in my visualization. And go back to my dashboard. When I change something in the visualization, it also changes it in the dashboard. But now I can actually filter here and I see the different views here on the left. Um, so that's useful. And then the other thing I can do, I can also apply these to all the different for example here, use this as a filter and so when I zoom in and I select a particular region, 
uh, where is my lasso here for my little selection bar. I can select, select a particular region and it only shows me the data of that particular region. So I think that's really where interactivity becomes extremely valuable. So we can actually have different views that are linked together through these selections and filters. And now you can start to play around with this and you can start to understand what's going on in the data. Okay, any questions? Okay, just lastly, before we run out of time, I want to show you how to upload this. So if I'm happy with this, I go to File and I can say Save to Tableau Public As. So as I said, Tableau Public doesn't allow you to save on your laptop. You have to upload it. But for your final projects, I think that's actually okay. So you can say Save to Tableau Public As and it's going to ask you to log in first. So I'm not sure, did you have to create an account when you downloaded it or not? Okay, so you have to go back to Tableau Public and create an account, at least one of you in each team. And um, if you do that, you have to sign in here. You can give your workbook a title. I call it uh, Seattle. And I can save it. And so if I go to the Tableau Public website, I can sign in. And hopefully here it should show up as one of the visualizations. It's still uploading it. I'm not sure if everybody else is uploading as well. But in any case, once it finishes uploading, here it is. Um, I actually have that saved in my online profile, which means it's now public. And the cool thing is I can click on this share button and I basically get an embedding code for my web page. So I can just copy paste this code, this little snippet of code into my website and it will basically put the visualization right there. And of course, all of the interactivity that you created in the dashboard is, um, you know, is still available. So I just selected single family duplex. Actually, I didn't want to do that. Um, so anyway, so I can, you know, still do the selections just as I did in my dashboard. Everything is basically filtered by the different views. Okay, so whatever you did in Tableau Public is now online including the data, I want to say. So that's important because actually down here is a download button. You can download uh, an image or, you know, the data or the workbook. Um, just, you know, be aware, don't upload any private data onto Tableau Public. I guess the name Tableau Public should be warning enough. So, okay, so to wrap up today, what I'd like you to do is just spend the last few minutes, go back to your music data where is it? And create a dashboard. All right, so you have a couple visualization. You have a couple bar charts, you have a line chart, and you have a map. Create a dashboard and try to add some interactivity uh, by just using some of them as filters for the others. And again, if you have questions, please let me know. Okay, any problems? Who, who finished the dashboard on the music sales? All right, so um, again, I encourage you to really consider this, to explore your data. It's also great as an exploratory data analysis tool. So if you get some new data set, um, you know, yes, you can put it into Python, and yes, you know, we showed you how to do exploratory data analysis with Matplotlib and Seaborn, but this is frankly faster. And the nice thing about Tableau is the drag and drop interface makes it relatively easy to play with different visualizations very quickly. And so um, I just encourage you to play with it and use it. And um, you know, if you want to save it, then you have to create an online profile. 
Uh, there's a lot of resources on the Tableau website. So first of all, the gallery. There's a lot of great examples, including some really interesting data sets here. You might want to just browse through this, even just to look at what kind of data do they have. So there is movie data, unemployment data, education data, Facebook data, etc. Um, and for each one of these, you know, you can actually look at what have they done with their website. You can see Tableau can be customized uh, to an infinite degree. So all of this is, you know, Tableau, but somebody spent hours just customizing each one of these different features. So it looks like that. Then there is a resource page with lots and lots of video tutorials. So if you, you know, get lost or you want to know how to do something particular, I would first look here to look, do they have a video tutorial about this? And they, they're very good, actually. So they have a lots of, lots of uh, you know, teaching materials here. And finally, there is always Google. So I usually, at some point, get lost in Tableau, and I don't know how to do something. And I just Google Tableau, you know, um, scatter plot and bar chart combined or something, and lo and behold, somebody in the world was kind enough to put up a little tutorial how to do that. Um, so I just encourage you, use Google to the maximum extent when you get lost here. So just to wrap up, maybe a final sort of question for you. What is the role of interactivity in visualization? Think about the things you've been able to do. What kinds of things are easy to do with interactivity? Yeah. Yes, so you can easily, in this case, drag and drop different categories, and you can, you know, look at different categorical variables very easily. So creating different views interactively is actually very powerful. Now, for that, you need a tool like Tableau, and, you know, that makes it very easy. Let's say you created an interactive visualization programmatically, like with JavaScript and D3, uh, which, you know, shameless plug, we're teaching in CS171. <laughs> But let's say you did it programmatically and you end up with a sort of interactive visualization. What's the role of interactivity in that case? Well, you used a couple of these things today. So just think back. What, what were you able to do interactively in a dashboard? Yeah, so you make this gesture here, so that's selection, right? We can select data points very easily, interactively. So by selecting data interactively, it makes it a lot easier than if I had to do it programmatically. In Python, you have to give it ranges and whatnot to actually select your data. Here, it's just interactive. You can literally look at the map, select the points I'm interested in, and I get an output. So selection is easy. What else? Yeah. Search, yes. We can actually search. We didn't, I didn't really show that, but in the map, for example, is a search feature for particular zip codes or whatever. So you can search is easy. Another keyword that we used in the dashboard was filtering, right? So if I have one view, I can use that view to filter data in the other views. So, for example, clicking on a particular category in the bar chart filters the data in the other views just based on that category. So filtering is also very nice if it's done interactively. And the last thing I would say is the linked views in general. Um, Tableau actually has many more advanced features on how to do linked views. So, you know, you could actually have linked views that when something changes in one view, something is being computed in another view and updates automatically. So having linked views where if you change something in one view, it updates all the other views is um, just a very powerful feature in general. 
Okay, so again, consider this for your final projects. And please submit your final project proposal as quickly as possible so that the TFs can give you feedback. And uh, we'll see you all on Tuesday. Thank you.